It's a rainy morning on the 10th of June, 1965. In a US Army Special Forces camp in the town of Dong Zhuai, South Vietnam, a force of American and Cambodian troops stave off a savage Viet Cong counterattack. Among the defenders is of all things, a CB team of the US Navy's Mobile Construction Battalion 11. And among these men is 25 year old Marvin Shields. The Viet Cong onslaught is such that even the CBs must run ammunition to the soldiers or take up arms themselves. Bullets whiz into the camp from every which way, as many pieces of lead as there are drops of rain. Shields makes a run for cover, dumping an ammo belt by some Green Beret mowing down Viet Cong troops over a sandbag. On Shields' return trip, a 60 mm mortar shell explodes just in front of him, blasting shrapnel into his flesh. A bullet tears through his jaw, shaves bone. His world spins, he tastes copper, but he's not going down yet. In this episode, we return to the Vietnam War to tell the tale of the only US Navy CB to ever claim the Medal of Honor. Let's get stuck into it. Marvin Glenn Shields was born in Port Townsend, Washington in 1939, a few months after the start of World War II. After graduating high school in 1958, he moved to Alaska to work on a gold mining project. In January 1962, with war raging in Vietnam, Shields signed up for the US Navy. In this same year, he married a woman named Joan and had a daughter whom they named Barbara. Shields completed his apprenticeship at Naval Air Station Glinko, Georgia in May 1963, and later that year trained as a construction mechanic at Port Huenemi in California. After this, he was assigned to Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 11, or NMCB 11, a CB battalion. CBs are US Naval Construction Battalions. When you say the letters C and B as an acronym for construction battalions, they sound like CB, hence the name of these naval units, whose creation had been approved by US Admiral Chester Nimitz back in December 1941. Their logo is a bumblebee, and their motto is, can do. Shields more than lived up to these words. In fact, he died for them. From November 1963 to September 1964, Shields was on deployment in Okinawa, Japan. In November, he was assigned to CB Team 1104, a 10-man unit with whom he completed team training in January 1965. February saw them off to Vietnam, assigned at first to a US Special Forces camp at Ben Soi, and then to a camp in the town of Dong Zhuai. Here, Team 1104's job was to repair and construct the Green Berets' compounds. The Viet Cong weren't having a bar of it though. Under General Le Trong Tan, the VC 9th Division pummeled the camp on the night of June 9th and then followed the bombardment with a massive infantry assault. Defending the camp at this stage of the battle were a dozen US Green Berets, a team of CBs, 200 Cambodians of a Civilian Irregular Defense Group, or CIDG unit, and some 200 soldiers of the South Vietnamese Regional Forces, a part of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, or ARVN. By early morning, the defenders had largely been pushed out of the camp, taking up defensive lines. During this phase of the battle, Shields ran ammunition to men on the firing line, all while he was himself under heavy fire. Later that morning, after the sun had come up, a mortar shell filled the young man with shrapnel and a bullet smashed his jaw. But, as we said, that wasn't quite enough to put the CB down. With what remains of his jaw and filled to the brim with adrenaline, Shields spits blood and clutches another load of ammunition to his chest. VC mortar shells explode all around him, one of their 30 cal machine gunners wreaks havoc from a hillside nest. Friendlies drop like flies. A man goes up in a pillar of fire, doused by an enemy soldier sweeping the battlefield with a flamethrower. Despite the rain, 
everything burns. Men, the camp buildings, the husks of downed aircraft. When Shields returns to the Green Beret he'd been assisting, the man is full of holes. Beside him is a wounded Special Forces captain, and despite his injuries, Shields calls a friendly soldier and a fellow CB to his side, and the three men hoist the wounded captain to relative safety. With the captain secure, Shields embarks on ammo run after ammo run, keeping his allies in the fight. After four grueling hours, he finds himself in the company of Second Lieutenant Charles Williams, the man who is now in charge of the Green Berets. Upon Williams' request for a volunteer, Shields assists the Second Lieutenant by loading a three and a half inch rocket launcher for him. Shouldering the launcher, Williams discharges a well-aimed projectile. That troublesome VC machine gun nest erupts in flame. This pisses the VC off. They direct much of their fire on Williams and Shields. Two bullets find a home in Shields, shattering both of his legs. He collapses to the mud, blood pouring from scores of shrapnel and bullet wounds. Reality comes to him in flashes. Now there are men standing over him, their hands covered in blood. Now he's laughing with the men, too numb to feel a thing. Now he's looking out the open door of a helicopter, watching a friendly jet paint the battlefield in napalm. Now Joan and Barbara are at his side. Now. Before Shields' evac helicopter could make it to Saigon, some 90 kilometers or 50 miles away, Shields succumbed to his wounds. However, the Battle of Dong Zhuai raged on. ARVN reinforcements arrived later on the 10th of June and gradually expelled the VC from the camp. Their way in hadn't been easy though. The ARVN 1st Battalion had been all but obliterated in a VC ambush just after the battalion departed their landing zone, and the 7th Airborne Battalion was reduced from 470 to 159 soldiers in a second ambush while searching for survivors in the nearby Tuan Loi rubber plantation. This left the task of retaking the camp to units of the ARVN Rangers, whom, once they were in, the VC could not dislodge. The Special Forces camp may have been recaptured, but this entire ordeal came at a heavy cost to the US, the ARVN, and Dong Zhuai's civilian population, with the latter suffering over 100 dead. According to US estimates, 416 ARVN troops were killed in the battle, while 20 Americans were listed as dead or wounded, and 13 were declared missing. VC claims were much higher, suggesting some 4,400 ARVN casualties and 73 American casualties. Make of that what you will. Inside the camp, 126 VC bodies were recovered. The corpses of several hundred more VC troops were sewn through the smoking battlefield outside. While the VC had withdrawn from the 13th, the battle saw the American camp turn to rubble and ash and the VC claimed to have captured over 1,600 weapons. Victory was absolutely theirs. A June 1965 article in the CB coverall described the aftermath of the battle like this. Eyewitness accounts of the battle describe the bodies of civilians and military dead strewn throughout the town. Men, women, and children were walking around in a daze, the recent events being incomprehensible to them. Others were found sobbing over the fallen bodies of members of their families. The village itself was nothing more than charred ruins. Some areas were still burning and smoldering. Of course, things may have been worse were it not for the can-do attitude of C.B. Marvin Shields, who for his bravery was awarded a posthumous Medal of Honor, presented to his wife in the White House in 1966. The citation reads as follows. Shields continued to resupply his fellow Americans with needed ammunition and to return the enemy fire for a period of approximately three hours, at which time the Viet Cong launched a massive attack at close range with flamethrowers, hand grenades, and small arms fire. When the commander asked for a volunteer to accompany him in an attempt to knock out an enemy machine gun emplacement with a rocket launcher, Shields unhesitatingly volunteered. 
he was mortally wounded by hostile fire while returning to his defensive position. His heroic initiative and great personal valor in the face of intense enemy fire sustain and enhance the finest tradition of the United States Naval Service. Had you heard of shields before today though? What about the Seabees? Do you know of any other Seabees who exemplified the Seabees spirit in Vietnam or any other conflicts? Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below.